So I'm back out here with Jackie. Jackie, the last time I saw you was about six months ago, June of 2023. We are now in January of 2024. What is new in those six months for you? Mm. <laughs> I wish that I had like big, good updates to say, but still out here, just trucking, mostly doing the same things. It's kind of sad. As I, when you told me that it had been six months ago, I was kind of shocked. I guess kind of get stuck in a rut. So I don't know. I went to, I don't know if the last time that you interviewed me was in the beginning of June or the end of June. But in June, I did go to detox. I don't know if I had talked to you after that or before that. I can't remember actually. Yeah, it was towards the end. It was towards the end of June because I was in detox on my birthday. That was my birthday present to myself. Kind of sad because I'm still out here, but. <laughs> So how did it go? Um, it went good, honestly, in detox during the time that I was in there. The problem was is that the second that I came out, I lasted about three hours after coming out and threw it all down the drain. Now the I temptation, the triggers, it, it's all right there. Yeah, I'm feeling like, yeah, I might have been, I might have gotten myself clean, but my life was still exactly the same. I was still in the same position. I was still out here. And I, there's a reason why they say that, that most people who are homeless are on drugs because if it wasn't drugs that caused you to become homeless, it's very hard to last being homeless without becoming hooked on them just because of the, the I guess, like depressing reality of it. The fact that it's all around you the lack of very much else to do. Um, like most people who are drug addicts, they're using drugs to numb something. And people who are homeless are usually running from something and have a lot of pain. So like I said, if it wasn't drugs that got you out here, it's hard to last without them out here. So. How old are you now? I'm 25. So. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if I met you when you were 23. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. So people in addiction, they tell me that time goes by faster. <laughs> in a blink of yeah. an eye, a year has passed. Yeah. You and know? before you know it, your life has gone down the drain and all of a sudden it's not so funny or fun anymore. It's not like, yeah, it's crazy. Because I feel like, I, I don't know if everybody who has an addiction is like this, but I know for me, definitely, one of the things that I started, especially at first, now it's sad because it, it doesn't even happen that much anymore, but especially at first, I'd always tell myself, like, I'm going to quit eventually, like, this is just a short time thing, like, and then time keeps passing by and, you know, a whole quota, if not now, when, type, so... But yeah, it definitely passes by quicker when you're, when you're, I think part of it is just the fact that you're high, you're high through life, you're not even really taking in time day by day, but, um. During your brief moments of sobriety, that's when it kind of hits you a little bit. Yeah. But then you got to go. Yeah. Take some substance, right? Some blues to numb the pain, right? The memories, yeah. the emotion, the depression, anxiety. Yeah, that was one of the hardest things when I was in detox to deal with is because, like I said, most people who are addicted, they're using drugs to numb something. They're using it to, to hide or run away from something. And so when you become sober, you have to deal with the whole brunt force reality, which becomes even more difficult because of the fact that you've numbed it for so long, so you're not used to it anymore. And because you have to deal with everything that's happened during the time that you were high, that you were able to avoid and block out. What was the, what's the difference between detox and a treatment center? Detox is where you just get clean, get it out of your system. Yeah. Treatment center is where they teach you how to coping skills, coping how skills, to avoid triggers. Skills, avoid triggers. They, they help you build um, support and everything. They help you think, I think like they help you find sponsors. They help you build like a support system, learn your triggers, learn your coping skills, learn basic life skills that a lot of people who are addicted or who are on the streets either never learned or have lost like memory of and everything so basically they teach you how to deal with life when you go to a detox center it's basically to 
help you, yeah, help you clean it out of your system, give you comfort meds and everything. So that's why they usually recommend detox and then a treatment center. My problem was I never even made it to my treatment center before I relapsed, so. In your opinion, do you think there's enough support out there, treatment centers, rehabs, uh, detox? Uh, from what I've been told, from what I, just my, my experience, it's, there seems to be resources, right? Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the nation. There seems to be sufficient resources. What I see lacking is the will yeah. of, of a Jackie yeah. and all the people and out here. And most people don't want to admit that. They'd rather it be the system's fault and everything. But at some point, you have to take some sort of accountability for yourself. You know, the whole, like, uh, what is it that they say? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. You know, at some point, people have to accept the fault in their own. Because... Nothing could change if you don't, if you don't take the first step, if you don't realize your own part to blame in it. Nothing will ever get better. But I've noticed that for myself, definitely, and I've noticed for a lot of addicts, fucking accountability is a very difficult thing to to handle. Which is one of the thing, one of the reasons, or that leads them to drug use. They they don't like to take accountability. They don't like to play a part in their their own life. They like to take a, you know, they want to block it out. That's I a good point. I've heard that a lot. I've, I, you know, that's a good point. You're making a, a great point because I hear that a lot from from people out there. Right? I, when I talk into them, I can see there's no accountability. I want to blame everybody else. Yeah, and everything is everybody else's fault. Right. But people don't realize that there's at least at least a little bit of empowerment when you have accountability, because if you realize what part you are to play in the situation, then you realize what you can do to change it. You take the power back of being able to make, you know, make a change in it. People don't get that. Absolutely. And so they'd rather be angry and resentful. It's a much easier feeling to deal with than, than realizing that sometimes shit really is messed up and it's really just nobody's fault but your own. Right. Um, when you went to detox, did your boyfriend go with you or it was just you? Yeah, he, he checked in with me. We were told that we would be allowed to go to the same like center and everything. But once we got there and we signed up, they told us that actually they were going to separate us and they were going to send him to a whole different facility in Tempe. So you didn't like that. That was really hard. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and we couldn't change our minds either. Once you sign into the, you can't sign yourself out. So we were just kind of screwed. Ouch. Yeah. What um speaking of boyfriend, last time I talked to you, um, I kind of felt bad a little bit because uh you know I, I so I interviewed you and he did something. He took my phone. He opened the door to my truck and and, and, and uh, took my phone and had to go chase him. Yeah. So I I felt bad afterwards, right? Because I I got the phone, but I had to ch literally run after him. And I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know what got into him. I've ne had never met him before. I'd yeah. never seen him before. I don't know what triggered him. I don't know what angered him. But you know that was like the wrong thing to him, him to, for him to do. I just wanted my phone back, and I didn't appreciate him doing that. And so I kind of felt bad afterwards because I kind of you know hit him a few times, you know, and I, yeah. I felt I, I did feel bad. So um, you know, uh, you know, I'm sorry if I scared you, you know. Yeah. But but he's so he's a big guy, you know. He's a tall dude, and and yeah. uh, and uh, is he okay? He's okay. That's that's a junior point. <laughs> he's um. A a little overprotective and a lot reckless. Okay. So, yeah, but I didn't know that he was gonna do that. I was kind of in shock. I didn't really know how to process what was going on. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what? Because one second you were like, hey, what's up? And then the next second, you, I was like, what? And then I saw him taking off and I was like, oh shit. Did you, uh, and I didn't did you run until after, after, after us or what? Yeah, I ran after because I was like, what the <laughs> hell and everything. I didn't realize until like right when right when you caught up to him, I didn't realize that he had taken your phone. I didn't know what had happened. I was all like, what the f is yeah. going on? I was like, do you guys know each other or what? He took my phone. Yeah, I just opened the door of my vehicle and just took it. And yeah, it's just, I, that kind of angered me because that's, yeah, not, that, that's not cool. So. Yeah, and uh, I saw him right now, right with you, and he kind of apologized. He said, "Sorry about last time, yeah. no big deal. Turn of the water, you know." And so, um, yeah. you know, it's it's okay. I just, you know, I, I just I felt bad for you because I didn't want you to be scared of me. Yeah, hitting on I him, was you know? kind of shocked. I, once I realized what was going on, though, I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah, I could." I mean, I would have run after him. <laughs> There's nothing else to do but run after you. Yeah. So, but yeah, I was chasing him around some cars, and uh, you know what happened? Uh, so. Uh, there's a lady in a vehicle in a van they're getting pizza right at the corner shop and uh she rolled down her window and as i'm chasing him going around her car and she goes art are you okay so one of my subscribers 
oh, on my channel. And that, when she said that, I snapped out of it. I like kind of woke up, you know, like, because I, I just wanted, you know, I already had my phone, but I, I was mad, like angry, you know. Yeah. And so she kind of snapped me out of it. And, uh, and I kind of appreciate that. The lady, I did a live session the next day and she's like, hey, that was me. So uh, that, that was pretty. Cool. Isn't that interesting how yeah, a, a subscriber crazy. was right there? Like, Art, are you OK? You want me to call 911? Like, no, nah, it's OK. I, you know, I don't want him, you know, to go to jail or anything. I just I just wanted my phone. But uh, yeah. no big deal. Um, in six months, Jackie, when I see you again. What will you be doing? Where will you be? Hopefully not here. Matter of fact, in all due respect, hopefully you don't see me again. Hopefully okay. I'm checked into a detox or, well, better than a detox because that didn't feel. Hopefully I go to a detox and then actually continue with my treatment plan. That's okay. all on me though. So okay. Hopefully I can talk myself into it. <laughs> You're really good at taking ownership and talking about accountability. So, um, yeah. you know, good you at acknowledging it. Not very good at doing anything about it, though. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, some people don't acknowledge it. Yeah, I guess it's a good first step. So you don't blame anything on you. You take ownership. And, uh, and I appreciate that about you. Uh, Jackie, I'm going to say thank you very much for talking to me. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad you're still with us in 2024. Yeah. With the, with the reason I say that is because there are people that I, I've been interviewing and they're, they didn't make it. Yeah. I just got notified about Roberto, 25-year-old Janetta, up. Tiny, uh, uh, and uh, Martin in a wheelchair. Didn't make it. Oh, didn't yeah. make it. I heard about Martin. That yep. was... Sad. So, uh, please stay safe. Thank okay? you. Please uh, do what you need to do to continue to take accountability and, and, and put action behind it, okay? Yeah. So, stay safe. God bless you. We'll talk soon, okay? Okay.